hello everyone welcome back to my channel in this video we will be discussing on how to make some good biochemistry notes that actually work now uh, i will start this video by giving you some tips and tricks on how to make them and i will end the video by showing you how i apply those tricks in my own notes uh, by giving you some examples of them so uh, i also want to mention that all the opinions and all the tips and tricks and techniques in these in this video are purely based on my experience and if they don't really work for you then that's completely okay you are allowed to figure your own way out but this is what works for me so the first thing the first tip that i want to give you is always choose your topics wisely so you don't really need to make notes of every single thing that is in your book or every single syllabus topic you just need to make notes of the things that you feel are difficult for you to comprehend or you feel that need more enforcing if you understand something right from the book then you don't really need to make notes about this you don't really need to write anything because everything that you say is already available in the book so what is the point so always try to make notes of the things that you are having difficulty in understanding so always choose your topics wisely make sure that it is a topic that is that you are struggling with it is something you need more information for etc etc tip number two please please for the love of god do not write down stuff from the book so don't just copy whatever it, whatever that is written in your book in a notebook that's not there is no point of that you see if you write down stuff from your book in a notebook and call it your notes you're essentially just copying the book and i don't understand what the point of that what is the point of that you already have your book in the print so you can just read it off the book you don't have to write it down right uh, I know a lot of you would say that, oh, it helps me memorize it. But if you really want to memorize something, solve its question and do spaced repetition instead of just writing it down over and over again. When you make notes, um, make them for the topics that you don't understand and don't write down the same information that is given in the book in a notebook. That's not, that's not good note making. So tip number three is use diagrams and pictures and charts make sure that your notes are concise so if the same topic is explained in four pages in the book when you're trying to make some notes for that topic it should be of one page so it should consist of figures it should consist the notes should consist of high yield information the notes should have pictures in them they should not be um, without pictures or without any um, you know diagrammatic representation because how are you trying to explain anything with just writing down stuff doesn't make sense tip number four is use colors don't make your notes in black and white now you'll say that oh but you know um, I just like I just think it's more productive to just use two colors and not waste my time so you don't have to make a rainbow out of your notes nobody's saying that but make sure you are you know assigning a color to a certain thing so if you're writing down some unnecessary some not so important information it's in blue and then if there is some clinical information that is in red your figure is in a different color something just something that connects something with something else you know what i mean i'll i'll, I'll explain it in an example of mine either way use colors tip number five is always add clinical relevance Every single clinical relevance that you can find for that particular topic should be right there in front of you in your notes. Because it's just we study in medical school and everything that has clinical relevance would be tested way more than something that does not have clinical relevance. So you have to add that clinical relevance right in your notes, right? So if you're learning about uh, anything about metabolism, any topic about uh, vitamins, any topic about anything basically even if you're learning about tca cycle know what are the clinical relevant points in the tca cycle just learning about tca cycle is not enough you have to add the clinical relevant points in the notes uh, tip number six is always organize your notes properly when everything is cluttered it's just hard to 
pull things out when you're trying to revise them. I always say that when you're finished with a set of notes, always make sure that they are organized properly. All your metabolism notes are in one place, all your um, gastro notes are in other place, all your vitamin notes are in one place, your DNA synthesis notes are in one place, so that you can pull them out easily and it's not a, just a cluster of pages that you're trying to sort through. That Nobody likes that. Uh, my last tip is that revise and review. There is no point in making notes that you won't go back to. If you are making notes for something that you know you will never go back to, that you will never revise, never learn, never write down on a whiteboard and practice, then you're just wasting your time. Don't bother with them. So always revise and review. Now let's move on to some of my own notes and I'll give you example uh, and I'll show you how I have made them and I really hope they help you. So let's start uh, with this. Okay, so this notes, uh, in this particular section, we have beauty nucleotide degradation. So I knew that it was one of the most important topics. I knew that, uh, that it's very heavily tested in my medical school. So first thing I did was to choose the topic. Second, as you can see, I have not written down the information. I have only made one high yield chart in my notes and I've stuck to it. So this is the chart that I made, which explains the entire um, purine nucleotide degradation pathway. And at the same time, I have also added the drugs that inhibit it, uh, the, the clinical relevance of it, as you can see right here, the gout treatment. Uh, so you can see I have added these small points that were not present in the book and were, you know, present somewhere else. But I've added them right here because I know that's, that's the entire point of this pathway was uh, the clinical relevance of it. So I've added that clinical relevance. I've also used colors to, you know, distinguish the pathway. That's one that happens in liver and heart and the other one that happens in skeletal muscle. So I've given them blue and orange color. So that is how I've differentiated them. So you see, I also use colors in them. Uh, this is one example. Another example is uh, chylomicron metabolism, as you can metabolism. As you can see that I have also made here uh, these intestinal lumen blood and liver pictures, and I have done in the entire metabolism uh, very pictorially, very diagrammatically. And then I have added the high yield points that I thought were important. And at the back, I have written down the clinical A beta lipoproteinemia point. So you see everything is in this one page and I know that whenever I get a question of chylomicron metabolism, I'm confident enough that I'd be able to solve not only that question, but also the clinically relevant point to it. So make sure that whatever you're writing down, uh, you have your clinical point behind it. As it, Now, this one else, so in the salvage pathway, as you can see that I have added the small pathway, I've written down the pathway, but the most important point is that I have written down this lesion and syndrome right uh, underneath it so that I'm not going to some other page to revise the clinical relevance of it. I have the clinical relevance right in front of me. If there's something else like the metabolism steps, I also write them down so that I can review them over and over again and memorize them properly. But at the same time, you have to realize that you don't need to know every metabolism step. You need to know the rate limiting enzymes and everything. So you can see that all the rate limiting enzymes and important enzymes are highlighted in red. Again, uh, an example of how I use colors. Okay. This is another example of pyrimidine synthesis, something else. I've written down the reactions and I've also made sure that I've, uh, um, that I've highlighted the things that I used uh, that could be used clinically if there is a vitamin B9 deficiency also I can see that there should be a problem in the pyrimidine synthesis um, if there is an aspartate transcarboxylase deficiency what would happen you know things like that and as they are in brighter colors uh, they just catch my eye and I ask myself whoa why why is it in why is it in bright colored right why why is it in red so I ask that question most of the time it's because um, it's clinically relevant uh, there's this biosynthesis of fatty acids. A lot of people struggle with it. I did too, but I wrote down all the reactions, wrote down everything that is important clinically, again, given in red so that I can just go back and tell myself, oh, why is it in red? Because it has a clinical importance to it. Again, pictures, colors, uh, reactions, enzymes that are clinically important um, and small things, small notes, small additions that translate 
to the fact that, oh, they might be tested, this might be tested, that might be tested. Okay. Moving activated for uh, fatty acids and mit mitochondria. Again, you can see a picture. Uh, and then again, the enzymes that were important highlighted because, you know, uh, they are clinically relevant or they are more, you know, they the chances of them being asked are way more in a question than the chances of something else being asked. So that is how I make my notes. And I hope this video was helpful. Uh, oh, this is one more. This is for VLD and metabolism. I really like this one, too. It's a very fancy sketch. Anywho, so uh, reviewing the tips, you have to choose your topic wisely. You have do not just write down the stuff. Use pictures, use diagrams, use colors. Always, always add some clinical relevance. Uh, organize your notes properly and make sure you revise them, you review them before your exams and make sure that you're comfortable with your notes and make sure you make them on your own rather than you know just using some online resources. The notes that you made on your own would be the most helpful to you. So I hope this video was helpful and if it was, then please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.